Get the Balance Right, a podcast for creative female entrepreneurs who want to get control of their finances, make more money, and live a balanced life. I'm your host, Heather Zeitzwolf, CPA and profitability coach. Join us each week to learn ways to run a more profitable business through inspiring discussions with financial professionals, business experts, and thought leaders. If you're looking for a quirky spin on business with a dab of woo-woo, grab your headphones. Together, we will break through our fears, live a life of abundance, and get the balance right. Are you using email marketing? If so, are you using it effectively? Let's face it, none of us want to spam our subscribers. But when we find that happy middle between being super annoying and hardly showing up, it is a sweet spot where profits can grow through this powerful means of marketing. I must admit, I don't use email marketing effectively, and this show today is kind of giving me a kick in the pants. Hello and welcome to Get the Balance Right Podcast. I am your host, Heather Zeitzwolf, CPA, profitability coach, and dedicated vegan. On this episode, we are digging into the power of email marketing. To discuss this subject, we are joined by Janet Fish, who is a business coach and the host of the Breakthrough Your Profit Ceiling podcast. Not only is she an email marketing enthusiast, she has coached over a thousand entrepreneurs in 16 countries and is the author of several books, including her most recent, Quit Your Day Job, 10 Steps to Financial Freedom. Oh, we gotta love financial freedom, right? The topic of email marketing, it's not new to this podcast. We did discuss using email marketing and the power of it with Elizabeth Case way back in episode 13. That episode has a lot of juicy evergreen nuggets. So I suggest listening to that one after this one. So episode 13 with Elizabeth Case, we talk about MailChimp, newsletters, and email marketing. So there is a link in the show notes. Please check that one out. It's really good. But in this one, we're going to cover some different things. I want to give you a little bit of a backstory about this book that I'm going to reference today. During COVID, my husband and I, we bought this pool for our backyard. It sounds great, but uh, it's a kiddie pool. It's 10 feet by 10 feet. It's a round circle. And we have these floaties that we put into the pool that have drink holders. And we can sit out there in the summer and kind of float around in these big round inner tubes that kind of bump into each other and read books. And it was fun during the summer, but now it's way too cold out to have our mini pool outside. But the book that I was reading through the summer was called Your Message Matters, How to Rise Above the Noise and Get Paid for What You Know. It's by Jonathan Milligan. And because I read this book in the pool, my book is pretty worn out. It's got all these uh, water damaged pages at the bottom because I was, you know, you're in a pool. You can't help getting a book wet. It's a wonderful marketing book that I have completely marked up with underlines, stars, and highlights besides the water damage. This book is great, and I think you'll really benefit from the information I'm going to give to you today from the book, but please get a free copy. Yes, you can get a free copy of this book. It's available on the author's website right now. So of course, I have a link in the show notes to do that. Get it now while you can. I just checked and it's still available for free. You just have to pay for the shipping. And just because it's free, don't let the free thing deter you. This is actually a really, really good book. I'd like to share some of the tips in the book that comes from chapter 13. According to this book, email marketing can increase profits. Well, according to the author, this is a direct quote. This is what he said. Starting an email list is vital to controlling your financial destiny. Ooh, that's a bold statement. He also notes email may not be around forever, but, and I quote, for the foreseeable future, Building an email list is one of the smartest skills you can develop. Hmm, but why is it so gosh darn important? Jonathan Milligan breaks it down into six reasons. We're going to go over those six reasons here. Number one, your email list is the foundation of your business. 
So that means that all the content that we create, such as blog posts, YouTube videos, Instagram reels, podcasts, etc., according to the author, should accomplish one primary purpose, and that is to attract people to your email list. Hmm. Okay, that's according to him. Uh, Other people may say, like, you do this to get more listeners on your podcast or they're just looking for engagement or whatever. I'm just identifying what this author is saying in this book. Joining your list should be the next logical step after consuming your free content. Therefore, to build a solid foundation for your business, we should always be focusing on getting the consumer of our content to sign up for our email list. All right, that's pretty important. I'm definitely not doing that. I need to do that more. All right, number two, this is the author saying this, your email list is traffic you can control. If you want people to sign up for your webinar or read your latest blog post or listen to your podcast episode that you just dropped, you can send your list an email to inform them to take action. Your email list is the most critical tool in your toolbox because an email list equals traffic. And by owning this list, you control that traffic. All right. Number three, he says, your email list is the best way to make money in your business. Okay. Again, that's something to really think about. Your email list is the best way to make money in your business. He has some stats in the book. So this may seem hard to believe, but This statement is based on studies and facts. 99% of consumers check their email every day. Wow, that's a lot. 99%. But before you get too excited, (laughs) it is important to note that 99% will not be your open rate. Although even what's considered a good open rate tends to be lower than 50%, it's probably even lower than that. According to a report from HubSpot, email generates $38 for every dollar spent. $38 for every dollar spent. That's an incredible return. All right, number four, your email list gives you instant access to your audience. All right, now you might think, well, I can get instant access to my audience through Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can go live, do all those things to directly access your followers. But keep in mind that these giant social media companies ultimately own those lists and followers. They belong to them, not you. This is kind of like you're renting out the space. So be careful. Make sure that all of your followers on these platforms are actually on your email list so that you don't live at the mercy of these platforms. In other words, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And we talk about this on the show with Janet Fish as well. All right, number five, the relationship is in the list. Being that email can be a very intimate form of communication, We must use it as such. Emails should feel personal and focus on the relationship. And if you do that, you will gain lifelong customers. But to accomplish this, you must add value. You can't always just be selling. You have to add value. And we go into this deeper on this episode of the podcast with Janet. Number six, the money is in the relationship. Hmm. Through adding value and positive impact for the potential customer, you will foster a relationship where sales will happen naturally. Through your list, you will be able to generate more sales because there is a relationship and they are actually interested in what you have to offer because otherwise they would have unsubscribed. All right, so that is all six. I'm gonna go back and just read them one more time. Number one, your email list is the foundation of your business. Two, your email list is traffic you can control. Three, your email list is the best way to make money in your business. Number four, your email list gives you instant access to your audience. Number five, the relationship is in the list. And number six, the money is in the relationship. And if you go to my extended show notes, you'll see these listed if you don't have a pen and paper to write this stuff down. Or, of course, you can get the book, Your Message Matters, which this is derived from. Okay, so you may be thinking, yeah, Heather, all of this sounds really amazing, but how do I build an email list? We all ask ourselves this, right? Unless you've got like thousands of people on your list. So to be successful in building an email list, 
you must answer three basic questions, which Milligan states in his book, chapter 13. Number one, who do you want to attract? Two, where will you find them? And number three, what tool or tools will you use to attract them? Who, where, what? Okay, let's break this down. So I kind of extrapolated his information in the book and put it in kind of my own ideas. The who is your target audience, such as mompreneurs or life coaches for lawyers or first-time podcast hosts. The more you niche, the better it will be. Who do you want to attract? Really niche that down. Number two, where will you find them? Where can be tricky and you may need to use some of your Nancy Drew investigating skills. Remember, Nancy Drew, it's all about where you will find your audience, such as a Facebook group that is really niched down into your group and find people there, maybe a local networking meetup. Then there's also paid options such as advertising. And you can also use options like a partnership such as affiliates to get more niche down and find your audience. All right, then there's the what. What tool or tools will you use to attract them? You can do things through free content, such as a webinar, downloadable PDF workbook, a quiz, a raffle, a challenge. Remember, though, whatever you create must be valuable enough for someone to give up their email to access it. People are sick of giving away their email, right? So asking Fresh Blood to sign up for your newsletter doesn't work well anymore because people have become more protective with their email. So what you need to do is produce some sort of free content that is so irresistible that they'll gladly fork over their email in return for your goodies. In chapter 13 of Your Message Matters by Jonathan Milligan, he wraps it all up by saying that as the relationship grows with your email audience, so will the know, like, and trust factor. That's really important, know, like, and trust factor. So if you have that no like, and trust factor, the next logical step for them is to purchase the products and services that you have created. All right. I, well, I hope that has inspired you to either start an email list or to cultivate and grow the one that you have. Remember, if you are giving value, then the spamminess factor of those emails go down. In this discussion, Jenna Fish offers some really good tips on the value that you should provide in your emails and the cadence of them. We get into a whole lot more information about the importance of email marketing. So sit back, ignore your inbox for a while, and join my conversation with Janet Fish from Breakthrough Your Profit Ceiling Podcast. Hello, and welcome to Get the Balance Right Podcast. I am here with my pod pal friend, Janet Fish. Jenna Fish, welcome to Get the Balance Right Podcast. Hey, thank you, Heather. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. I was on your podcast. Now you're going to be on my podcast. I don't know. This is very exciting to be on the other side of the microphone. It is pretty weird to be on the other side of the microphone. <laughs> Janet, for the people in the audience that don't know you, you are a podcaster. You are a coach. You are an author. There's a lot of things in there. Tell us a little bit about your business, your podcast, and your books. I have been a an entrepreneur and a business coach since 2005. I've coached over a thousand people in 16 different countries. So I've been doing this a really long time and I love serving people. I work with entrepreneurs, my favorite entrepreneurs, although I've worked with big, big, big companies and things like that. But my favorite entrepreneurs are the one who are making, I don't know, under $300,000. The solopreneur who is starting a business or just trying to grow their business. A lot of my clients aren't even making that. My big thing is to get them to six figures. And then once they get there, they got a lot more options as far as how they can grow. That's a little bit about the business. Podcast, Breakthrough Your Profit Ceiling Podcast. I'm coming up on two years in January. Wow. Wow. It has been since January of 2020. So I've been doing a podcasting for a while. It is all focused on entrepreneurs. We talk about challenges and overcoming them. And I like to talk about how overcoming challenges makes us better. And then I love to do something called a marketing audit, which is what, is what I did with you. Bring on entrepreneurs. We talk about their marketing strategies. I give them some advice and what they might do to increase that. And then it gets released as an episode of the podcast. So they get some notoriety and some exposure with that. Tell them the podcast name. It's called uh, Breakthrough Your Profit Ceiling 
podcast. And what is the name of your business? And then Breakaway Business Coaching is the name of my business. Awesome. And then there are books. We'll go deeper into your books, but right now, can you just say the title of your book? I've actually published five books, but my most recent book is called Quit Your Day Job, 10 Steps to Financial Freedom. So during the course of coaching people, you know, 16 years, I came up with this 10 step process that most entrepreneurs go through, not maybe not always sequentially, but they go through. So that's really the focus of the book is those 10 steps to really get from in conception or starting a business or just being kind of stuck in your business and wanting to get to that next level, kind of the 10 steps that people go through. So that's where the book came from. Very nice. I'm going to have to pick up a copy of that. Very intrigued (laughs) by this. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about email marketing. And we've talked a little bit on the show way, way back, and it was more about newsletters. We focus more on newsletters. But today we're going to talk about the importance of having an email list and maybe some nuts and bolts in there as well. But Janet, why do people need to have an email list? What is the main point of having an email list? I literally am obsessed with email marketing. A very high percentage of clients that I work with, either they don't have an email list or they have an email list and they don't do anything with it. They don't email anybody. I'd say it was maybe a year and a half ago when I changed email service providers. I now use ActiveCampaign, which I love. And I had to redo all of my automation. So an automation or an autoresponder is a set of emails that you write one time and then they, you know, you know, something triggers them and they go. And so I had to rewrite them all because I was moving to a different platform. And I just got really obsessed with writing automations and writing good emails and the best practices about what makes good emails. Because, I mean, there's all these statistics that say they're the the return on investment for email marketing is 44% higher than like any other marketing strategy. So why like, wouldn't you do that? Right. And then I'll also use the occurrence of Facebook and Instagram going down, right? It went down for a day, how many many hours it was. Well, your email list is never going to go down and you own your email list. Like Facebook doesn't own your email list, but it owns all of your followers, Mm -hmm. right? They can kick you off that platform tomorrow. So I just think that email marketing is a really, really important part of growing a business. I don't know. I'm looking in my email box right now and I got it full of it's Cyber Monday today, right? So it's full of Cyber Monday offers. I just sent out my Cyber Monday offer. So I I just think it's a great way to communicate with people. And it is a huge asset in your in your business. One of the reasons why people feel hesitant about using email marketing is that they feel like they're going to be bothering people. They are spamming them. They're not really sure how often they should send them or what they should send them. There's a lot of questioning and and maybe it's a mindset issue that they have to kind of get over this. I would imagine that when people get your email, they're going to only open some, sometimes not always. So what are some of the barriers that you feel like your clients may have to get over to actually embrace email marketing. So let's just start with the fact that email marketing is one of the most effective marketing strategies you could have. That's just bar none. Secondarily, like my best practices that I talk about and I teach because I do a workshop on email marketing is the one in six rule, which is you send out five emails that are really good content, that are informational for the challenges or the problems or what you solve in your business, what your target market needs. Send them five emails that have really good content. And then the sixth one can be an ask. Get on the phone with me, buy something from me, do something. So if you really provide great content most of the time, you know, five out of six times, they're not going to be like, oh God, not another email from Heather because she's just trying to sell me some stuff. No one wants that. So I think it's, it's a great way to communicate with your clients or your prospects. It's a great way to stay in front of them. Let's say I decided that I don't like my CPA, my accountant anymore, and I want to go look for somebody new. Oh, I remember this woman that she had just crazy hair and she was super outgoing, but I can't remember her name and I haven't heard from her in I don't know how long, right? 
she asked my email address, but I haven't heard from her. But if you're sending me, hey, like, this is what you should look at. It's the end of the year, and you should have a meeting with your CPA to plan for what you're going to do this year or next year, then you're front of mind for me. If I'm starting to look for somebody else, Heather's the person I'm looking for. So I just think there's so many reasons. And when you do automation, let's say somebody opts in to get your free newsletter or your checklist or whatever it is, you can create a string of emails that go for the next, you know, I don't know, 20 weeks, 30 weeks that you write one time and just go. You don't have to do anything, but you're in front of those clients. So I I think it's really important. I have lost clients way back in the day because I didn't stay in front of them. And when they decided they were looking for me, this was when I was doing real estate, but when they decided they were looking for me, they couldn't find me because I hadn't contacted them and they went to somebody else. Let's keep people in your world, not in your competitor's world. You gave some great examples of, I guess you'd call it maybe a funnel where they give you you their email for some kind of downloadable thing. Let's just say in my situation, maybe I might give them money tips or something like that. That's right. Then finally, I give them my offer. So I'm not just emailing them constantly with just my offer. That sounds very effective. What about utilizing video in these emails. What do you think of the idea of video and email? And I would say I would mix it up between video, image, and bulleted short emails, right? Mm. Like, I don't know about you, but if I get an email that looks like I opened up a page of a book, I'm not reading that, right? I need something that is catchy, easy to read, bullet points, small sentences, I'll skim that. So skimmable is a great, is a great characteristic of a great email. Those work much better than long, long emails that, you know, no one wants to read. What about emojis? I'm not a big emoji fan. However, some of the great digital marketers, they use emojis. So I think if that fits your personality and that fits your business, then emoji away. With email marketing, Half of the the trouble is, or maybe 90% of what stands in your way is that people don't even open it. So getting someone to actually physically click on that email and open it and look at it is, I don't know, I'm going to say it's 90% of the the effort goes into it. It absolutely is. I mean, a good subject line is critical. Yes. The subject line, I've seen different types of software or apps to figure out what would be the most clickable line. There's certain words like I've heard that video is a word that people will be more apt to click on. I guess it's knowing your audience, but do you have any tips on subject line? One, you're absolutely right. Like know your clients and know what they want, know what their needs are. But I think any subject line that either satisfies a need or piques your curiosity or like anything that you'll look at and say, hmm, I wonder what she's talking about. So I'm going to click to find out. They say tips and lists and things like that work really well. They say really short, provocative. I don't know that I'd go super far down controversial unless you really know your target audience and who you're sending to. I have signed up for a lot of people's lists, mostly marketers, because I want to see what makes me open. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm my target market. So I look at what resonates with me with the emails that I get. Make it something that someone would go, hmm, I want to learn more or I want to find out what she's talking about. Never do anything that like you've got some kind of cool subject line and then I click on it and nothing in the email matches the subject line because I will unsubscribe. Like I'll be like, heck with that. Like don't do anything you need to to get people to open them. Make sure that what you're talking about in the subject line you're talking about in the email. Yeah, because otherwise that's kind of clickbaity, I guess. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is another area where I think people are like, well, what am I even going to talk about? You gave some examples of doing some value and then we could do a newsletter. That would be another option. But what are some things that you can talk about? Is it usually looking at what your audience is struggling with? Is that perhaps what you want to write about? It could be struggling with or just information. That was a couple of suggestions. One is every email that you send out, and, and like I said, five or six of them are nothing but good content, should have a clickable link that sends them someplace. 
because you want to teach them that every time they open an email from you, they want to click on that link to get something that they need or something that they want or something that teaches them something. So that when you send them that sixth email, which is the get on the phone with me and let's talk about your marketing strategy, they're going to click on it because they've been kind of taught that when I click on it, I get good stuff. And I would only have one click. I would only tell them to do one thing, go here to learn more. I wouldn't have them do a whole bunch of things because confusion leads to no action. So don't give me a whole bunch of things to do. And then tell me what you want me to do. Click on this to learn more about that. Like just be really direct with what you want people to do in their emails. Do you need a copywriter to get started with these emails? Or I guess it depends on your own writing skills. That might be a, a better option for some people is to hire a copywriter. It could very well be. I write all my own emails because after all these years, I think I have a really good idea of what my target market or my clients are looking for. If you're uncomfortable with it and it's stopping you from actually writing emails, then get some help to do it. With the copywriter, though, you'd have to get somebody that could be your voice, like emulate what you would sound like if you wrote good copy. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I think if I was working with a copywriter, I would write down the, the concepts that I want to get cross because most copywriters aren't going to know what you and I know about our business. So you write down the concepts and then they put their magic spin on it to actually put it into something that people will respond to. But I think you're completely right. If you had some really dry copy that you sent out, that doesn't fit your personality, doesn't fit your brand. I too, I'm like a little goofy. I'm a little bit more laid back. I'm not super duper strict professionally. I like to have fun and laugh and my copy isn't like that. I think you're absolutely right. That's a great, great point. You want it to reflect your personality and who you are. I do like you. I get on other people's lists just to yeah. see what they're doing. And I love to see how they structure it, the layout, what, what their offers are, the language that they're using if they're using uh, like animated GIFs or a video or something. But I find from watching these things come over and over again, I'm like, I am obviously not their target. Like I don't jibe with what they have in their emails at all. So it's interesting to see it over time. It really needs to be reflective of who you are. I think. I think it does. That's another reason why it's so important to put video in your email. I don't see a lot of video in emails. Maybe that's why you had heard that if someone puts a video, the word video in the subject line, people are going to click on it because not very many people actually send video via email. However, that is you. That's you on camera, right? So, or hopefully they get to know you a little bit better. And I think that's a really powerful thing. So if people want to get started with email marketing, there's a lot of software companies out there. You had mentioned one. I use MailChimp. Do you feel like one is better than the other or just kind of depends on your preference or? It doesn't. I used MailChimp and then I went to Active Campaign. The thing that I didn't like about MailChimp, they fixed it. So maybe I would have stayed if that had been the case. But I don't think it, it matters. There are some big, big, big ones that if you're starting out, I wouldn't go spend a whole lot of money. I mean, you know, an active campaign or a MailChimp or, or Get Response or any of these contents contact, you know, they're $15 a month or something until you get a lot, maybe 5,000 names on your list. Or you want some more sophisticated technology, like maybe you want to text the people or, you know, whatever. So, uh, but you can get a really robust database system, CRM or email service provider, whatever you call them for a really reasonable price. And then if you need to grow into it, grow into it. They're pretty easy to, to use. I mean, they're pretty easy to set up your email campaigns if that's what's holding you back because you looked at something five years ago and you're like, oh, that's too complicated or too whatever, fill in the blank, look at it again because they've come a long way. And you, and, and, and you just can't not do email in your business. I don't like it is just such a powerful marketing tool. And it's the value. Like if someone wants to buy my company or buy your company, the first thing they're going to ask me is how many clients do you have? And, you know, where are those? You don't want to get out a bunch of folders, you want to say, here's my database of clients and I've got, you know, 1500 of them and or whatever that number is, that's real value in your company. Okay. That's really good to know. When people are starting off their business, their email list may be very small mm -hmm. and maybe it is 
their mom is on there or whoever <laughs> that will subscribe. But to get people to subscribe to your mailing list, we talked about having some kind of download. What are some ways that people can get people onto their emailing list? Yeah. So have an irresistible free offer, right? So it's free for the price of an email address. So a lot of things that work great, it may be a, a one pager or 10 tips or five things you need to know or five things you should avoid or whatever those things are, but have some kind of a really good free thing that is irresistible to people that they're going to be more than willing to give you their email address in exchange for that valuable information that you said it fits a need or a want for your potential clients or your clients. When people are putting together some sort of funnel where you are mentioning, okay, now we've got this person, you've given them some kind of irresistible PDF, they've downloaded it, now they're in your system, you had mentioned sending them a series of emails, how do you kind of map this whole journey out? How do you go about doing this and knowing like, what are the next pieces? What's the cadence of sending these out? How long they should be? Like, are you mapping this completely out their whole journey? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's what we do in our workshop. What journey do you want them to go on? What information do you want them to have? And then when do you want to give them an ask or ask them, ask them to buy your, you know, your $7, your, your $11 book, your whatever it is, you know, cause you were talking about a product funnel and how I get them down the product funnel. You would map it all out with some video, some image, some text. And make sure that you're following the best practices. So don't have, you know, 25 paragraphs of something that someone's going to read through. But you do. You map it all out and then you write it. Most of my automations, if you get, I have a bunch of lead magnets, which we call those irresistible offers. So if you were to opt in for one of them, you'd get an immediate thank you for getting the 35 ways to build your email list. And you'd get a delivery of that that downloadable PDF. You know, I've added you to my email list. You welcome to the community and you're going to get a series of educational and informational emails over the course of the next whatever weeks. My cadence is the deliver, wait two days, another email, another email. So email number two, another two days, email number three, another two days, email number four. And then I go once a week for however long my automation is. And most of my automations are, I don't know, I'd say between 12 and 18 emails is usually what my automations look like. And do you have a cap on like how many words or does it just as long as it needs to be or do you like to keep things short and sweet? Uh, how, how do you go about that? I like it short and sweet, but I would say the length of your email should be as long as you need to get your point across and not a word more. So I actually think less is more in an email. Yeah, I think so too. One of the issues that I've found is you do the one monthly newsletter. Now it's coming up with these other ideas. We we were just talking about trying to figure out some sort of struggle that the client or customer is going through. Do you have any suggestions on ways to generate ideas? Just a couple off the top of my head. A lot of my ideas, especially when it comes to the podcast, because we're in the same position, like what are we going to talk about every week on a podcast, is what my clients are asked. what questions are my clients asking me, or what's coming up in the world of social media or wherever I am in my world. So that's number one. Number two, what questions should they be asking me that they're not asking me? Because that's one for you, because yeah, we we don't know as entrepreneurs what we need to know. Like we don't know what we don't know. And then if you, then it's what's going on in your industry, like what's hot in your industry as far as news goes. And then if you really get stuck, I would like Google like blog posts about entrepreneurial blog posts or something just to get some juices you know, flowing about what information is out there. And then I'd say this other thing, like you don't have to recreate the, the wheel from scratch. Like, let's not do that. So if there's a specific topic you want to cover, go read like four articles about that topic and then take the pieces from the articles that you like, make them your own, put them in your own voice. And that's great copy. Oh, okay. I Because I have seen people where they curate other people's information and put it in a newsletter. And you, and you could do that too. You could do a summation and then link them to the article. That's a great link. 
So do you think that the list size matters? It matters, but what matters more is engagement. And I would say that whether you're talking about your email list or your podcast downloads or your social media followers or whatever, you you know, whatever uh, connections, whatever social media you're in. So I do think that numbers matter. And I think the more, the better. However, at the end of the day, I would rather have a hundred email addresses that I had a hundred percent open rate than a thousand that I got a 5% open rate, which I, you know, you know, we're never getting a hundred percent open rate, but my point is I would rather have really engaged email addresses than more that don't ever open an email. Oh, open rate is important. And besides open rate, click rate. So once people open it, did they actually click on your link? That seems right. like another one that we really want to gauge. Let's define what a good open rate is. A good open rate is 20%, you know, 10 to 20%. If you're getting a 40% open rate or something like that, you are off the charts. The average is probably around 20%. So just know that that is the, that's the average open rate of an email. The other thing is if you really want to fine tune that, you can do A, B testing. So you can try of half your people in your email list, one subject line, the other half, another subject line, because that's the only thing that's making the difference between whether they open it or not. Unless there's some kind of time of day or day of the week kind of thing that might play into it as well. So I'd say play with it and tweak it, but I wouldn't get obsessed with your open rate. I think if you've got, like I I did, my Black Friday went out. I looked at, I think I had a 19% open rate. For Black Friday, that's probably not bad. My Cyber Monday... If I got, you know, 15% open rate on that, I'd be pretty happy. So just be realistic about it. And then the one, the third thing, so it's open rate, it's click rate, but then there's also a conversion rate. Did they do what you asked them to do? Now, if you're just giving them some information and saying, go read this article or go look at this other thing on my website or whatever in more depth, go listen to my podcast episode, whatever. Okay, great. But did they actually do that? Did they buy the thing you wanted them to do? Did they contact you with the questions they might have? And it's not always the easiest thing to figure out what the conversion rate is, but that's another thing to look at when you're looking at the stats around your email campaigns. I want to ask you, Janet, more about these books that you've written. You've written five books. Are they all business books? At one stage of my business career, coaching career, I was working with a bunch of entrepreneurs. I wrote this book called um, The Slimpreneur, and it was all about how to, you know, be an entrepreneur and and focus on eating well and, and putting yourself first and all that kind of stuff. So that's a book I wrote on that. And then I created this recipe book that went alongside that. So one was a recipe book, but all the other books have been one in real estate because I started out in real estate. And then the last book that I wrote is in its second edition, but I still only consider that one. So yeah, I like writing books. And when I say I'm an Amazon bestselling author, people are like, wow, some people are impressed by that. So it's, and it's a great thing. I had sent somebody a copy of my book probably over a year ago and she went and hired somebody else. And I'm like, that's great. And then she came back to me and she's like, well, that didn't work out. And then she said, oh, and I, by the way, I gave your book because you know, she went to somebody else and that person called me. It's just amazing what a book can do. If you're thinking about it and you haven't done it, it's a, it's a good thing to do. How can people work with you? You're a coach. Tell us about your coaching business, how people can work with you one-on-one. Do you do group coaching? We do a couple of things. I have some online courses who isn't quite ready to work privately with me. Most of my clients are private clients that I work with one-to-one. Um, I do do some group coaching. And next year, I'm going to do a bigger push on that. I'm going to do some expanded group coaching, and I'm going to create a membership for next year. So those that's are ways that people can work with me. I am obsessed with email marketing and I have created this email marketing workshop, which I do right now. I'm doing it six times a year. So I do it every other month. And so if you want to work on your um, email marketing a little bit, come join me in the workshop. Awesome. And we'll have links to that in the show notes and we'll have links to your podcast as well. But where is the best place for people to find you? Is it Instagram? And if so, what is your handle there? Yeah, it is Instagram. And I am at Breakaway Business Coaching on Instagram. Awesome. And Clubhouse, you've been embracing Clubhouse? I am embracing Clubhouse, so I am there as well. 
Very cool. So we'll have links to all of that in the show notes. Well, thank you, Janet. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much, Heather. This was great. Great to chat with you about all the things that I love and, you know, love to talk about. Yeah. And I think you've inspired people to start email marketing if they haven't done it yet. So thank you so much. So they say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So I'll say the same thing. The best time to have started working on your email campaigns was January of 2021. The second best time is today. Yes. So go do it, people. Yes. (laughs) Awesome. 